Friday, January 11th, was an ordinary day for me. I woke up in my own bed, in my own house, and freely lived my life choices as protected by my government. Unfortunately, January 11th was also an ordinary day at Guantanamo Bay. Alleged war criminals were being held without trial, without even the minimum of Geneva POW rights, having to endure humiliating acts, solitary confinement, temperature extremes, and forced positions, according to the International Red Cross. And that's the rosy picture. A darker picture is painted by actual detainees that have been released. First reported here by Draxter Dupree. What happens behind these barbed wires? The little information that comes out of Guantanamo Bay through former prisoners, their lawyers, or the occasional NGO is remarkably consistent. They all report similar horrors. Beatings, electric shock, people chained to walls, floors, their heads plunged into ice-cold water. What makes this story personally difficult is the same American government that protects my rights is responsible for these atrocities. But what I and many other Americans want the world to know is that the current government is not the people. January 11th is also when the American Civil Liberties Union staged nationwide and Second Life-wide protests of the 6th anniversary of Camp X-Ray. The ACLU was joined in Second Life by activists who created an in-world Camp X-Ray experience. I'm Peggy Weil. I'm a professor at USC's School of Cinematic Arts in the Interactive Media Division. I've worked in digital media for a long time. I'm very honored to be working on this project with Nani de la Peña. I'm Nani de la Peña. I'm um, a writer, filmmaker, and one of the co-creators of uh, Gone Gitmo. Gone Gitmo was designed to bring awareness to issues of habeas corpus. I received a telephone call from my son. His dad had been arrested. And uh, I said, what? Why? He said, I don't know. I've been kept like a, like an animal in a cage. They don't give me food. It became very clear to me that we had a situation where Guantanamo is to all but the most serious and dedicated workers inaccessible for American citizens. So we have a real but inaccessible destination and Second Life presented an opportunity. You know, you got 70% of people wanting to close it down. You know, how, how do you get them involved? Well, you know, if you start getting them to go there and then you provide a repository of information of this is what you do, here's where you click to write your congressman, here's your, you know, tools, it can really be an um, extraordinary, um, uh, and I'll say tool again, but extraordinary tool to, you know, toward change. If one student Googles habeas and learns about habeas corpus, we're happy. And, you know, uh, to go through that and actually kind of put your, you know, to be detained, even however briefly, it, it, it gives some sense of, you know, what, what, what that really means. And, and that's kind of our goal, like get people thinking about it, get them learning about it, get them really recognizing that this is, um, you know, this is an inexcusable thing that this country has done and we need to stop it. We need to stop it now. We need to take the country back, you know, because this is not what our constitution uh, says. It's not what most Americans believe in. This is Lucien Franciosa, Life for You News, saying, regardless of your politics, without habeas corpus, what are we?